So we are in Pretoria and for a meeting, AU20. Oh, today, as a Pan Africanist, what do you think about the African Union? I think the African Union is a great achievement of the African peoples to have an intergovernmental organization that represents Africans in the African continent and the global African family outside of Africa. This is a great achievement because in the organization of African unity, they did not recognize the place of the global African family outside of Africa. And in fact, many of those heads of state worked with the World Bank so that the number one investment in Africa that comes from African descendants in the global African family, the World Bank wants to take those remittances to serve the interests of international capital. Not only the World Bank, but the, IF, the, the IMF. At the World Bank and the IMF. Okay. So the, 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 the African Union has made an important step in recognizing that you must have a body that recognizes global Africa. Now, the limitation of the African Union is that it is run by leaders who are, in the most part, illegitimate. And when the African Union had an agenda for full unification of Africa, and that agenda was to catch up with what Marcus Garvey talked about 100 years ago, the free movement of people. In other words, what is being discussed in the African Union is an attempt to catch up with what is going on on the ground in Africa. You cannot tell a Maasai who lives in Tanzania that they have to cross a border to go to, Tanz to Kenya. You cannot tell someone who's an Awe person who lives in Togo that they have to cross the border to their shrine of the Awe people in Ghana. So whether it is someone who's a Yoruba from Benin who comes from um, Nigeria and Benin. The African people understand that Africa should be united. It is the borders that, was estab that were established at Berlin in 1885 that's preventing the full realization of the unification of the people of Africa. But the African traders, if you go into the market in Luanda, Angola, you'll find traders from Senegal. You go to the market in Zambia, you'll find traders from Nigeria. If you go fishermen from Sierra Leone all along the coast of Africa, so the African peoples understand that Africa should be united. It is the governments who are themselves compromised by their relationship with Europe who are standing in the way of the unification of the peoples of Africa. And one of the major tasks of the unification of Africa is establishing the rights of the African peoples to control their resources. Africa is the richest continent, but the gold from Africa is used to support the currencies of the people in the Emirates or China or the United States, and they want to destroy Africa. So one of the big drawbacks of Africa was when they killed the president of Libya and they destroyed Libya because the president of Libya wanted the currency of Africa to be one currency and not to have French currencies or the United States dollar or the Chinese currency or the Japanese currency. And so the African Union has a major task. Now this task has been accelerated by the multipolar world we are entering. And so the tasks that were laid at the table at the African Union Summit in 2007 about the African Central Bank, the African monetary system, and the African currency are going to be the reality. And let me talk about my passion in Africa. Is how do we unite your passion? My passion is how to unite the waters and rivers of Africa.
are we build canal systems so that everybody has clean water, everybody can transport in the middle of Africa, and how we can save Lake Chad so that the environmental challenges in Africa, which transcend the borders of Africa, so the drying up of Lake Chad has affected all of the countries in the Lake Chad Basin. And on the table before the African Union is a proposal for the building of a waterway system from the eastern bank of the Congo, linking up with the Chari River through Cameroon to replenish Lake Chad. We have a project of seven great canals in Africa, but this one is already on the table and we need the African people to be educated about projects which unify Africa. They were just talking about an African satellite that you do not have to go through France to make a telephone call from Ethiopia to Cameroon. So there are many projects that are on the table, but we need an African Union that's accountable to Africans at home and abroad. Because the Africans in Haiti are looking to the African Union to say, how is it possible that the state of Israel can be an observer status at the African Union but an African state like Haiti cannot be a member of the African Union. So there are many issues that are on the table, but the job we have to do as activists, as Pan-Africanists, is to popularize what are the leading challenges of global Pan-Africanism for uplifting the quality of life of the African peoples. African people, you just mentioned it. Your passion is not just about water, but it is also about people. Uh, how do you, what is your analy? How do you see what is taking place today in Sudan? It's the most exciting revolutionary process that is going on in Africa. Marx wrote in the Civil War in France about the Paris Communards that had 71 days of power, of building people's power, of fighting the military and in those 71 days achieved self-governance among the communards, defending their communities, feeding themselves. Now the people of the Sudan, if Marx celebrated 71 days of the Paris communards, we should celebrate three years of the victory of the Sudanese revolution to overthrow the military regime of Bashir and to set up a new government in the Sudan that is responsible to the needs of the people. Sudan is a microcosm of Africa. It's multi-ethnic, it's multi-racial, it's multi-religious, and it has all of the resources of Africa. And the Sudanese revolution needs the solidarity of the African people so that Saudi Arabia, the United States, the European Union does not impose any change in Sudan that brings back the military in a new guise. So the Sudanese revolution needs to be engaged and discussed at every level in Africa and how we can support our brothers and sisters who are fighting for peace and reconstruction in the Sudan. In 45 seconds, what is your message to the African? Because these are Pan-African uh, channels, these are Pan-African TVs that are uh, You've been watched by Africans in general. What is your message to Africans? My message to the young people is to try to move from thinking about Wakanda as fiction to reality. Black Panther and Wakanda talked about the possibilities of turning African minerals into the products for the new technology in the 21st century. Wakanda talked about the unification of Africa and fighting for Africans outside of Africa. The point about Wakanda is that we must move from the, 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 the Wakanda of the screen to the Wakanda in, their life, in daily life. That means we must be fighting to end colonialism and racism. So our brothers and sisters who are in colonial territories such as Martinique, Guadeloupe, Cayenne, Western Sahara, Mayotte, they will know that we have not forgotten them, that Wakanda forever means that we're fighting for black people everywhere.
Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Thank you.